First of all, uh, good evening and welcome to Show Me the Money, Demystifying the Annual Fund. So I'd like to acknowledge a couple of attendees in the room. District Governor Betsy Manzelli is here, thank you. Um, District Governor nominee Alexander Falk. I know District Governor-elect Terry Curran is in another meeting and will join us at some point. We um, have past trustee of the foundation, Julia Phelps may be joining us. She also just recently lost her mother. So her mother passed away, so I'm not sure she will be here this evening, but she was planning on it and I did wanna acknowledge her. Um, and also our district foundation chair, Liz Cullen. There's also a couple of past district governors attending, so thank you for coming. And I believe you all know me, Joan Arsenault, immediate past district governor and chair of the annual fund subcommittee. So our annual fund subcommittee consists of Maria Bertoloni and um, Elizabeth Roth or Beth Roth from Greater Salem, New Hampshire Rotary, Lisa Foley and Bernie Creedon from TBM Rotary, and Lori Karras from the Peabody Rotary. So this evening, we're gonna have our presentation followed by stories and some grant conversations. We'd like to adjourn at 8.30 at the latest and maybe earlier, depending how long our conversations go. A couple of housekeeping rules. Alexander Falk is gonna be our tech support tonight and Terry Curran when she joins us. The evening will be recorded. If you have questions, please type them in the chat room and then we're going to have a, a um, question and answer period before we go into open discussion. And during the open discussion, we're gonna stop the slideshow and just show everyone and we're gonna ask that you raise your hand at that point to get acknowledged. And now I'd like to introduce our guest speaker this evening, Elizabeth Davis. Elizabeth is the Rotary Foundation's annual giving officer for zones 32 and 28E. She works with zone and district leaders to develop strategies and giving initiatives to support Rotary's annual fund, as well as gift work with individual donors. She's been with Rotary since 2016 and works out of Rotary's world headquarters in Evanston, Illinois. And I have to give a special shout out. I've gotten to know Elizabeth fairly well over Zoom and, and certainly have met her in person when we could, but she is currently on quote vacation, moving into her new home and has, um, uh, and has shared her evening with us, even though she's technically not working. So thank you, Elizabeth, and I'm gonna turn it over to you. And just when you're ready for the next slide, just tell me next. Okay, sounds good, Joan. And thanks so much for inviting me to be here. I'm so excited to um, get to join you guys as part of your uh, district and foundation month. So anytime that I am talking about the foundation, I always like to start by reviewing the Rotary Foundation's mission statement, which you can see right here. So that mission statement is to enable Rotarians to advance world understanding, uh, goodwill, peace through the improvement of health, the support of education, and the alleviation of poverty. But in my opinion, the two most important words here are the words enable Rotarians, because that's what the foundation's all about. It's a membership benefit. It's provided exclusively to Rotarians. And it's to support the work that each of you are doing locally in your community, as well as around the world. Over the past 100 years, the Rotary Foundation has provided more than $4.5 billion to fund projects led by Rotarians. That's a lot of money. That's really exciting um, and a lot of really great life-changing work that has happened over the years. Uh, next slide, please, Joan. So the generosity of our members and the good work that Rotary does has not gone unrecognized. We received top ratings from Charity Navigator for the past many, many years. Um, and Charity Navigator is one of the leading evaluators of nonprofits in the U.S. And according to Charity Navigator, our foundation has ranked number one of the 10 best charities everyone has heard of in recognition of our exceptional impact, accountability, and transparency as an organization. 
We've also been named by CNBC as one of the top charities changing the world, which is really exciting. So what are our areas of focus? We'll go to the next slide. So we have certain areas of focus for the work that we do as an organization. I'm sure that you know them well, you can see them on your screen here. One exciting addition that we're getting this upcoming Rotary year is the addition of supporting the environment as our seventh area of focus. Um, and you'll be able to do large scale sustainable projects uh, with the support of grants in this area. It's very exciting. The Rotary Foundation is here to help you turn your passion for a cause into action and lasting change with the help of our world-class grant opportunities. Again, this is only available to Rotarians as a membership benefit. Next slide, please. So how does our funding model work? We have a selection of funds that you can choose to invest in for the work that you want to see done in the future. First, we have Polio Plus, which funds one of Rotary's top organizational priorities of eradicating the world of polio. Then we have the annual fund, uh, which is my favorite fund, if I can uh, be so bold as to say. Um, and through the annual fund, uh, through our share system, it creates funding for your district every year to pay for both the district and global grants that are led by your clubs. Then we have our endowment fund, which creates funding for projects in perpetuity for your district. So you receive investment earnings every year in perpetuity, no matter what, which is really awesome. And finally, you can give cash gifts directly to global grants. However, these gifts do not receive additional matches from our world fund. And what is our world fund? It's our source of funding for your global grants. It's, I know it's a lot of information, but just a really high level overview. Next slide. So when you contribute to the annual fund through its share investment program, half of your gift becomes available for your district and clubs to use however they choose. For example, if you make a gift of $1,000 to the annual fund share, for three years, your contribution is invested. Historically, the investment earnings have been used to pay for the foundation's operating costs. After three years, that money is made available to fund your projects. Half of the contribution, or in this example, $500, becomes part of your district's district designated funds, which is commonly referred to as DDF. This is the money that your district uses to help fund local and international projects your district decides how to use it. The other half goes to the World Fund, which I mentioned earlier. These funds are used for worldwide grants, foundation programs, or aid where the trustees determine that the need is greatest. Districts that are active with both district and global grants get the full impact of gifts made by their members through our annual fund share program. The funds that your district has access to this year comes from contributions made three years ago, which would have been in fiscal year 2017 and 2018. That's why it's so important for members to invest in the annual fund share system every single year to ensure that your good work is able to be done in the future. And now I'm going to hand it back over to Joan to talk to you all a little bit more about the annual fund and specifically the work that your district has been doing over the past couple of years as a result of you guys supporting that fund. Joan. Thank you, Elizabeth. So as Elizabeth discussed, giving to the annual fund share supports rotary driven projects that are created at the local level developed to meet the needs of the community and fostered through a community fellowship. A year ago, about two weeks ago, I think it was November 9th, through our annual fund and our club supports, 
our district provided service dog rabbit to disabled Marine veteran, Makayla Brito. Makayla was able to return to work and provide a better life for herself, thanks to our giving. And in fact, today at the Amesbury Rotary meeting, um, Makayla was the guest speaker. And I have to tell you that Rabbit has enormously changed her life. And she had us all in tears at the end of the presentation. So if you're looking for a speaker to show how our annual fund share giving helps someone, I recommend you contact her and um, contact me. I can give you her uh, email if you need it. Besides our service dog project, our annual fund giving supported many local and international projects. Last year, we spent $58,323 on club and district projects from our district designated funds with at least 85% of the grants spent locally. I wanna repeat that because I hear all the time, some people say, when we give to the annual fund, it's international. We want the projects here. Well, 85% of those grant monies were spent locally and 13,500 of the grants were spent specific to COVID food relief. Approximately 15% of those monies was spent internationally in Bangladesh, Uganda, and Colombia. 27 total grants were awarded. 17 clubs received grants please up that, please make sure you do your grant qualifications, but please up that, and they may be closed this year, that could be a question Betsy and Liz can answer later, but this is your member benefit. The district also received two grants, one for the service dog, and also backpacks for the Wonder Fund charity. And as you can see, the breakdown of the grants by area focus was 61.7% on health, 26.82 on community development, and 10.6% on education. This demonstrates how our annual fund share greatly benefits our local communities and individuals, as well as international service projects. And I am just so delighted, proud of our district, and so excited to announce for the first time in history, our district has received an in-district global grant. We are doing a global project on our local shores in our own district. Work on the grant started last year with grant committee members, Julia Phelps, Ingrid Brown, Lori Karras, and myself. And with the support of District Governor Betsy, the grant was actualized this year. So let's talk about that money and how it grew. We started with $30,000 in DDF, remember that's district designated funds, from our district and wow, did it grow. Through Lori Karras's and Boston Seven's relationship with the Rotary Club of Kyoto, South Japan, District 2650 in Japan agreed to be our grant sponsor. They gave us $10,750 from their DDF, even though for COVID specific grants, Rotary International waived that sponsors had to give money. So that gave us a total of DDF of $40,750. And remember DDF funds are matched dollar by dollar by the Rotary Foundation World Fund. So it increased the grant amount, amount to $81,500. And then the Rotary Club of Kyoto South Japan donated $1,000 and clubs and individuals in our district contributed $13,770. This increased this grant to $94,950. And I can't thank you enough. And I know the whole district uh, track thanks you and uh, from the bottom of our hearts for, for this. The recipients of the grant, and this is a COVID global grant, are Care Dimensions and St. Francis House. This grant had to be specific to PPE, the majority of the funds spent on that, with a small amount of funds being able to spend on food relief. $44,950 is awarded to Care Dimensions for PPE. Care Dimensions provides comprehension, comprehensive and compassionate care for children and adults 
and their families dealing with life-threatening illnesses. Care Dimensions is the nonprofit leader in advanced illness care and offers services in more than 95 communities in Eastern Massachusetts. $50,000 is awarded to St. Francis House, $40,000 for PPE and $10,000 for food relief. St. Francis House is the largest day shelter in Massachusetts, located in the heart of downtown Boston. An average of 500 poor and homeless men and women are served a day, 365 days a year. They also have an on-site medical clinic providing approximately 10,000 appointments per year, making it one of the busiest healthcare sites in the city for homeless adults. I just have to say that this is hot off the press. We are working on press releases and, um, and uh, actually in the process of distributing the money as we speak, um, but it's just really, really exciting. And now I'd like to turn it back to Elizabeth. All right, thanks, Joan. So the projects that we've just discussed were made possible because members of your district supported our foundation and participated in foundation grants. Several years ago, we as a foundation started a fundraising initiative for the annual fund called Every Rotarian Every Year. The goal of Every Rotarian Every Year, also sometimes referred to as E-Ray, is to encourage support of the annual fund and increase Rotarian engagement with the foundation. This effort is based on the idea that if every Rotarian gave as little as $25 per year, just $25 to the annual fund, that the possibilities of what the foundation could accomplish would multiply. In 2019 and 2020, just this past year, we did accomplish a lot. Rotarians gave a little over $123 million to the annual fund and the foundation awarded more than 1,300 global grants. With nearly a third of Rotarians making a gift to the annual fund and becoming E-Ray eligible worldwide, we've achieved a lot and improved the lives of many. But can you imagine how many more lives we could change through grant projects like we've just seen if we encourage even more Rotarians to contribute, again, just as little as $25 per year to the annual fund. Next slide, please. I would like to recommend to you that one of the easiest and most secure ways for you to support our foundation is through Rotary's recurring giving program, Rotary Direct. You choose the amount, contribution method, and frequency that works for you, either monthly, quarterly, or annually. Rotary Direct offers many benefits to donors with convenience top among them. But by automating your giving, you no longer have to remember to donate multiple times. You just make steady progress toward your philanthropic goal. I personally have my Rotary Direct signed up for monthly giving and I love it. I, I reach my thousand dollars for Paul Harris Society at the end of every year and I don't even have to think twice about it. You enroll through the Foundation's secure online contribution system, which can accept 14 currencies, which is really kind of cool. Simply sign into your MyRotary account and register. Um, if you don't already have a MyRotary account, you can go to my.rotary.org and sign up. Uh, but if you already have one, you can sign in and you select profile and then go to donor self-service where you'll see options for getting started. You can always also contact our Rotary Support Center for help with Rotary Direct. Um, but you can easily make changes yourself online. Next slide, please. So other ways you can give in addition to Rotary Direct, uh, you can give online at rotary.org forward slash donate. If you're signed into my Rotary, your gift will automatically be connected to your account and credited to your club. 
especially around uh, year end or in December, if you're looking to make a contribution for the end of the tax year, uh, I really recommend the online giving platform. It's the it's really the fastest and most secure way that you can make sure your gift gets in on time. Um, highly recommend. But you can also give by talking to your club foundation chair and make a gift through your club. Or you could also mail in your gift with a foundation contribution form, which is also available on my Rotary. And last but not least, and this is also, in my opinion, one of the most exciting uh, ways and interesting ways that you could give is uh, with your organization. If, you're, if your company is eligible, consider having your contributions matched by your company or your employer. Request a matching gift form from your employer and send the form to the foundation completed and signed along with your contribution. And the reason why, well, one of the reasons why this is so interesting is your, your contribution is being doubled, which is really awesome. You're doubling your impact. But also what's fun is that you receive recognition points for the contribution that your employer makes. Um, so it's a really great way, a really great opportunity to both double your impact with Rotary and also um, to receive some extra recognition points. Um, and with that, I'm going to pass it back again to Joan uh, to talk a little bit more about uh, increasing your impact. Thank you, Elizabeth. So no matter what you give, you just heard Elizabeth say $25. And I, I always find it hard to ask for money, but I can ask for $25 um, or more. Um, no matter how you choose to give, I really hope you join me in supporting our annual fund this year. Gifts of any size have a big impact when they're leveraged through our foundation and our network of Rotarians here and around the world. So, so far this year, even in COVID, this is incredible. Our giving is $49,906. Last year at this time, we were around 46,000. So that's unbelievable. Please, please keep giving. And congratulations last year, as we made the third largest contribution to the annual fund in zone 32, which that total contribution for that year was two I'm going to mess these numbers up, 274,196. So 2,700 and um, I'm doing it wrong, sorry, 274,196. And I want you to remember that 50% of that comes back in uh, Alexander Fox year. So please continue to give. We also gave the largest per capita giving of $156. So all of you should be really proud of yourselves. This is our foundation. This is our member benefit. This is our charity to do the incredible work we do in our districts and in our clubs. So I, we wanted to open it up to questions right now. And I'm gonna ask um, Alexander, and I believe Terry has entered um, the room to see if there's any questions at all in the chat room before we go into open discussion. Alexander? Yeah, so far, so far there are uh, no questions in the chat room. So I think we can oh, go straight to gosh. open discussions. This is too quiet a group. My goodness. All right, well, what we wanna do is we're going to go to open discussion and you can certainly ask a question there. I really want you to share your stories this is a time for you to talk about how has the annual fund supported your club? Um, also, are you looking for a grant partner? I know some of you have grants out there, which I'm hoping Alexander, I know his club has one. Um, they may be looking for someone to partner with that. This is an incredible way to make those connections and to talk about um, what's occurring uh, in your club and the great projects you're doing. So I'm gonna stop my share and open it up and 
Alexander, do you want to unmute everybody? And then um, I, I think if at this point people can raise their hands if they have a question or use the little hand icon, that would be great. Yeah, and, and everybody can unmute themselves when, when it's your turn to speak. So that's the, the easiest way. I, I'd rather do that than unmute everybody at the same time because otherwise we get some background noises. But okay. if you have a question, please raise your hand and we will ask you to speak. And Alexander, there's one in the chat room from Paul Buckley. Oh, yeah, that just um, appeared. Yeah, so um, go ahead, Alexander. Okay. Yeah, so the, 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 question, the question from Paul is, um, if you could clarify the statement about whether or not just the interest pays for the expense of the fund and, and if that is really a lot of growth when it comes to the annual fund. Yeah, and you know, I don't know off the top of my head what the rate of growth is, unfortunately, but um, absolutely, historically, the reason why it goes through a three-year investment process is so that um, the foundation doesn't have to take off the top of that contribution to pay for the cost of processing the contribution, um, which for a lot of organizations, that is the case. A lot of organizations do have to take a certain percentage off the top of every contribution to help with the uh, administration costs. The Rotary Foundation, we invest for three years and the earnings off of that investment we use to pay for those costs. So it's really, um, again, one of the reasons why we have such a great rating with Charity Navigator is one of those. Great question. And if, if I may add to that, to give some exact data, the annual fund rate of return for the last several years was 2.8% in 2018-19, 3.9% .9 in 2017-18, and 11.6% 2016-17. Thank you, Alexander. It's all available on the Rotary website. I'll share the link right now. And please, Liz Cullen, our foundation chair, and I know Ingrid's been our uh, past uh, foundation chair. And if anyone else who has knowledge, please jump in. Um, Elizabeth and I don't have to be the only ones who answer questions. This is too quiet a group. There must be a question. All right, Linda has one, Alexander. Yes. Um, the question from Linda is that, that uh, her club's foundation chair, which is Linda, prefers not to handle uh, all of the money. So the treasurer puts an, an optional $25 notation in every quarterly dues invoice. And that's an easy way for, for the uh, club to raise the money. No I, statement I, in the question. I have guess. a question. How many people here, how many club of your clubs, the club you're in, raise your hand if you have gone for a district grant even this year or in the past? Pretty good, okay. All right. And does anyone wanna share a grant that they're working on this year? I'm gonna pick on someone if, you, if someone doesn't share. Alexander, I was gonna pick on you. <laughs> So, so our Marblet Rotary Club is in the last stages of uh, finalizing uh, our application for a global grant for a water project in Burkina Faso. We've been, we've been working on this for the last two or three years. We partnered with the Crystal Club of Ouagadougou uh, in Burkina Faso and also with the Sejo Wuli Club um, in district, uh, gosh, 50-50, I think. Um, and and we are in the final stages of, of having the, the the spreadsheets all ready for the for the budget for the funding, and then um, we'll reach out to to not just our district but also districts around us, and other clubs to see if they want to partner and participate. Uh, the the quick summary of the grant is that it's going to be uh, drilling twenty wells in in twenty rural uh, communities in Burkina Faso. So it's one of the poorest countries in Africa, and uh, the need for water is an absolute uh, essential need for for dignified human life. So I'll, I'll, I can tell you more later. We have a PowerPoint presentation that I might actually be uh, asking on various clubs in our district if I can come and speak to you about that grant, but it's not quite ready yet. What about your service dog grant with Chelsea? 
Oh, yes, that was a district grant. Um, I, I personally wasn't involved in that much, so I, I don't know all the details, but I believe it's a district grant that we applied for this year and it got approved. Uh, it was done in partnership with uh, the Chelsea Rotary Club. What Marble had, had, had tried to do last year was when, when Joan, when you under your leadership had the district service dog project, we tried to do our own service dog project and we couldn't find a qualified um, person in Marblehead. And so we broadened our circle and we, we, we looked specifically, uh, our goal was to help a, a, a child that was on the autistic spectrum. That was what our club had decided to focus on with the service dog project. And we found uh, one candidate in Chelsea and then started cooperating with the Chelsea Rotary Club. And so it's a, it's a district grant that we're doing two Rotary Clubs together as partners. And um, we've, we've just had a joint club meeting a few weeks ago, um, including the, the child and, and her mother. And it was absolutely fantastic to see, see the bright smiles on their faces about, about getting this wonderful opportunity. Thank you, Alexander. Betsy, do you wanna unmute? I'm not so good at that. But anyway, I just want to mention, you know, because last year and how the annual fund was working and now, especially with this whole COVID, it's definitely been something that I've been very, um, I think, proactive about in my DGV uh, district governor visits and mentioning that I created an FOB club, friend of Betsy club, um, to get folks to start making those donations early to the annual fund. And we will continue that. We did extend the deadline to December because hmm, what a surprise the district governor visits didn't have not finished um, before <laughs> the end of December, which I know Joan battled with it last year as well. Um, and I'm not saying that it's, it's um, made it any better, but um, they'll all get a little gift for me that is being made at the present moment. I'll have them next week. Um, just a little tchotchke. And this actually is sort of copying what John Hall did many years ago with the first class. And, and for me back then, that was such a great little incentive to make everybody do their donation early so that when we hit them up again in this, you know, after the new year, um, those donations will be a little bit better. We'll see how it worked. We'll see how not. But I think it also goes to if we can get those people to make that donation of $25 or more, that E-Ray count will go up. Um, you know, I think Paul Harris Society could go up. I don't know if it will happen this year, but it'll probably happen during Terry's year. I think it's that constant conversation that just has to continue to happen. So that, that's my two cents worth. Thank you, Betsy. Um, you know, I think it's so true. I, I know we're in a, a COVID times, but um, during these times, there's so many people in need and our dollars just get matched. So if your club comes up with a grant and uh, for uh, a grant, you can get up to $3,000 if approved, that gets matched to $6,000. So um, your money goes such a long way. And um, again, the work we've done um, in this district, I think we don't talk about it enough. And I think we, do, we might ask for money, but we don't always show what we've done. And so to me, every year, your club should be putting a grant in. You should put a grant in and you should ask people to support the annual fund. And I'm sure you are doing that. But, um, you know, if you think of last year, we have 47 clubs and only 17 clubs put in for district grants. So this is a wonderful time. We're all on Zoom. We're captive audiences. Have a discussion on the annual fund. Have a discussion on how do you increase that funding and, and not just that, but then what do you do with those grants and what do you do with those funds? I know Pooja, Pooja's here. I know um, that uh, Burlington Breakfast had done some grants and, um, you know, a, and we're here to support uh, Liz Cullen, myself, Betsy, um, the DG track. We're all here to support you through that process. Questions, comments, Ingrid. I just want to stress how easy and important um, 
donating direct with um, just sign up for whatever you want, however you want to do it. All you got to do is remember to put it in your checkbook. That's it. It's and it just piles on so easily and it's a brainless way to do it and you do so much and there's a ton of clubs that you know they they panic for this and you don't need to panic because you make your own decisions on this but it's extremely important to do that continual donation because a spurt here a spurt there is great but if you do it continual, even if it's on a lower amount, it's to your benefit, it's to the club's benefit and to the district and to the worldwide fund. Thank you, Ingrid. And I'd like to mimic what Ingrid said because I, two years ago, um, or maybe it was three years ago, that was brought up to me by Julia Phelps. And um, I went in and made my monthly contribution that now I know happens every single month and I don't have to think about forgetting it or whatever it is. Um, and you know, now I upped it because I made a commitment to be a Paul Harris Society member. And, um, you know, and, and it was only a few extra dollars. So it wasn't like this big amount, but over the course of a year, I'm giving a thousand dollars. So I think that we just need, like you said earlier, Joan, we just need to talk about this more, how easy it is for folks to do that. People pay their bills automatically online. There's no re reason why they can't make their contributions for charity online as well. Thank you, Betsy. I think I, Alexander, did you see Sandy's hand up? I think Sandy had. Yep. Go ahead, Sandy. Just uh, I'm here. Yeah. Oh, I'll unmute. Am I okay now? Yep, you're good now. Okay. Uh, ju uh, just to follow on on uh, contributions, uh, and for those of us who are a bit longer in the tooth. Um, once you hit 70 and a half, if you uh, have an IRA, you have to take a distribution called an RMD. Uh, and the law, the tax law allows you um, to, to make contributions. I think it's up to $100,000. Uh, but contributions to uh, 501c3 uh, charities. And uh, that's a great way, and that reduces your income directly. So if you're not, if your contributions don't put you over into the itemized uh, category for taxes, uh, for tax deductions, uh, this directly reduces your, uh, this is a, another way to skin that cat, so to speak. Thank you, Sam. Uh, I found it works very well. And uh, RI is well, uh, well schooled in how to handle this. Thank you. Other questions, comments? Pooja. Um, I was just saying, um, uh, we our club does not give direct to the RI uh, because our club matches 100% up to $100 per member. So if our members give $100, the so $200 club will provide to RI. Um, so if the person gives directly to RI Direct, then um, the matching does not go that way. So that's why we give the whole bulk at the end of the year or sometime when everybody has given the money. So just a little thing that our club is doing. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful that you uh, match someone's individual contribution. That's right. awesome. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. That's great. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, Peggy. Yeah, I have a question for Sandy. Um, that is a good point to use um, your RMD um, and forward to the, um, to the foundation. Um, does that have to come directly from your, can that come, the money comes to me and then I can, can I use a personal check to send it in as long as I have the paperwork to show? How does that work? No, you, uh, if the money goes to you, it's taxable. 
Uh, the way the way you make it non-taxable is you have your um, your plan administrator, your uh, uh, IRA cons custodian, uh, make a distribution um, called a qualified charitable distribution (QCD) uh, directly to, uh, in this case, uh, the Rotary Foundation. Okay, thank you. That's what I, it can't pass through your hands. I can't, even though I do it within a certain amount of time, and I should I have the paperwork to show it came. But you, okay, I understand. Yeah, the trick in this thing is to make sure that you don't take your uh, your RMD um, early in the year. You uh, you you take it more towards the back end of the year, so you've got time to make whatever charitable dis distributions you want to. Because right. once you take that RMD, then you can't do this. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And I've posted a link in the chat uh, to the rotary.planmygift.org website, where there is a detailed section exactly on those IRA contributions and how to handle them. So if you click on that link, you get all the details. Thank you, Alexander. Any other questions? Yeah, Bill. Unmute Bill. There we I'm go. Now. Um, with respect to, to just to elaborate on a comment that Elizabeth had made earlier about corporate matching, uh, sometimes you have to work with your employer and really push them to add Rotary International to that process. Uh, my former employer it took us over five years to get them to include RI as part of that. So it's something that you know, as a Rotarian, you might just have to go out and do a little extra shoveling and pass information on to them and say, this is the good work that's being done before they'll agree to doing that match. But eventually it does pay off if you get enough fellow employees to push on it. Thank you. And it increases your district's DDF, which is really exciting. I forgot to mention that earlier. Any other questions or comments? This is a, a comment that, that I thought I'd just throw in there. Um, I am by no means a tax advisor whatsoever. However, I do happen to know, and you might know this as well, that this year with the CARES Act, um, you can you can write off a $300 charitable contribution without itemizing on your taxes. Um, which is really cool. Um, so that's just a little food for thought. If, if anyone is uh, still considering uh, making some charitable contributions by December, um, some food for thought. Thank you. Sandy, did you have your hand up again? I'm just on mute, Sandy. That was just a thumbs up on that comment. Oh, thank you. Lisa, did you, were you waving Lisa or just moved your hand? <laughs> Bernie. Okay, I think I'm unmuted here. Uh, yeah. Just to, to give a, a brief description of a grant that we've had approved just recently for this year that involves our working with the fifth graders in the three elementary schools in the three towns. On a, with a program that has been in place for a few years called the, the DASH program. Disability Awareness Starts Here and the Wheelchair Foundation. So it involves us working locally, internationally, and with a hands-on, literally hands-on, because working with the fifth graders, the disability unit that they uh, work on is physical disabilities. So all the devices and uh, mobility tools that are used uh, to, to assist people, whether they're young or older, uh, are involved with it. The challenge that we have going forward is directly related to COVID and physical distancing and being able to provide our, uh, not just our in-kind, but our physical presence in the school to be able to finish off that part of the unit that's going on. So we're figuring out a way how to do that and we'll make that happen. But it, I think it, it's been, um, something that individual members had tried to do. And it's not a, not a huge grant and we're not a big club, but
but it, I think it, it meets many of the goals that we've had, uh, thinking globally, but acting locally uh, from that perspective. Um, so what's the amount of the grant? $1,500. But you'll be making a huge impact in your community, Bernie. Absolutely. I mean, it's a Absolutely. great, it's a great grant. And I think, as I've been saying all year, right now during COVID, sometimes the smallest things that we're doing make the greatest impact. And so I thank TBM for continuing to do that. Liz, our foundation chair has a comment. Hi, Liz. I'll mute, Liz. Uh-oh. You're muted still. We'll ask her to unmute. Okay. Um, I just wanted to comment that on um, on Bernie's grant, it's a wonderful grant. And I have to say, Betsy approved it yesterday. And Bernie got the, um, the go ahead today. And um, I also wanted to just let you guys know that so far, um, what's been going on in the district? We have a a global scholar, Elizabeth Tadari, who is uh, who has a, a bachelor's degree in um, pan pandemic pentamol, whatever it is, and she's right now she is um, she's been approved. She is in London studying at the University of London School of Tropical Diseases. And um, so that is part of contributions to the district. Uh, we also have 10 grants that have been approved. One of them, we all, we've heard about Marblehead and their dog. Marblehead is also building um, bicycle, bike, bike racks for their bicycle trails because they are always in the forefront of, um, of environmental progress. Um, Cambridge has two grants. One is for a library and one is for working with the homeless. Uh, Linfield has a great, had a great project. They are doing, um, providing backpacks in, uh, for Lynn students with school supplies. Uh, Salem is doing their usual backpack program, which is one of the wonderful things about providing food for the weekend for students who are at, from at risk families who normally have either nothing to eat or the wrong food to eat over the weekend. Um, they all, Salem is also involved in a literacy program. New Report has a great program in Stop the Summer Slide, which they have done in the past with the New Report uh, public schools. There are students, well, I'm sure you're familiar with summer slides where students, they don't read over the summer, they don't do math, and they end up in September behind where they were in June. And it's a great program to provide reading books to at-risk students. And it's kind of fun because the students don't know they're at risk. They think they've won the lottery because they get free books. And some of them are now saying, can you believe it? I've won this three years in a row. But um, anyway, it's a fabulous program. And please contact me, it's my club. If you have would like some information to do that in your community. Uh, Rockport is continuing the project, fabulous kitchen project in, in uh, Uganda, um, building a kitchen for a community center. And then as, as, then as Bernie said, um, today, well, actually last night, um, TBM got approved for their, um, their wheelchairs. Uh, we have a few more in the, um, who are just waiting to be approved because we're just missing a little bit of documentation. There is a tiny bit of money left over, like maybe, maybe $5,000. So if you are um, from the DDF managed, district managed grant fund. So if you are interested, um, please, let, please let me know um, ASAP because the money will go fast. But I just wanted you to know that there are funds left over and that this, this district is certainly doing its best uh, to do good in the world. Thank you, Liz. And that is, again, our member benefit. Um, you just heard $5,000 up for grabs. Um, you know, if you're grant qualified, go for it. Um, we don't want to, you know, it, that money doesn't leave our district. It just next year goes into the global part. And remember this year that money came back to us. 
Um, so it's not that the money goes away, but again, we have that available right now. Boy, what what is uh, more needy right now than to help people? So uh, more now than ever. So five thousand dollars. And and Liz, is it accurate? Um, that someone, a club could get more than one grant in a year? Oh, yes, it's fine. You, you can have, there is really no limit on the grants. It's just the limitation is the money, which is all the more reason to give this year for the future in three years time. Thank you. Any other comments, questions for anybody? The, I mean, it's just amazing the wonderful work we're doing in this district. And again, that annual fund doubles our money. So two for one, um, you know, it, and, and globally think of bringing grants into this district. You know, we always used to think global or at least I did, oh, I'm gonna do a grant somewhere else. Well, there are opportunities for grants in here. So, you know, always have that on the table. Um, I'm going to share my screen one last time. If there's any other questions, let me know. I just wanted to thank all of you for coming this evening. Um, I really, really hope that you continue your dialogues, continue to support our annual fund. And we do have a great annual fund committee and foundation committee. And if you need a speaker, we are there for you. We will come speak on the annual fund and I know that Liz and other members of foundation will come speak on foundation as a whole and I'm sure maybe Elizabeth would come talk again um, which in fact she is January 21st um, from 7 to 8 p.m. and um, this is going to be directed towards your foundation chairs or annual fund chairs and really but anyone interested in foundation so the title is going to be Create Your Recipe for Success and Understanding Annual Fund Reports, which I'm still, believe it or not, even after being district governor, learning. And so um, while that sounds dry, Elizabeth has really come up with this great idea to make it uh, really fun. And she would like you to send in your favorite drink recipe to me. And I'm going to create a drink little cookbook and whoever comes that evening will get those favorite drink recipes. And she is asking that you also bring that favorite drink to the presentation and sip along. And we're gonna explore club reports. We're gonna discuss ways to increase annual fund knowledge again. And um, if anyone wants to share their success and stories at that time, um, it would be great. So I just would um, like to thank everyone. Um, I'd like to thank Alexander and Terry for tech support, although I'm sorry, Alexander, I noticed I did take over the questions at the end. Um, I'd like to uh, thank everyone for being here this evening. And I certainly would love to give a big shout out, big thank to Elizabeth Davis, who is just an incredible resource and just uh, a friend. Um, and thank you. Thank you, Joan. I loved, I loved joining you guys tonight. It was a lot of fun. Good. All right, everyone. It, we're good. It's five of eight. Yay. Yay. Have a happy, safe Thanksgiving. Yes. This family gets to celebrate Thanksgiving completely separately now. So happy, Elizabeth, happy moving. Good luck. Thank Happy you moving, so Elizabeth. Yep. We want to see. Yeah, pictures. good luck with your Elizabeth move. When you're done. I'll send. I'll send photos. I'll give you a little <laughs> before. before yeah. and after. Before. Yes. Oh, oh. There's before and after already. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we have a view of Lake. It's is it Michigan? No. Lake Michigan. Yeah, yeah. That's right cool. outside my window. It's perfect. oh, how awesome. Yeah. Virtual housewarming party. We all come. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yes, let's do it. <laughs> we'll bring our drinks. Yes, please give me drink recipes. That's, That's right. will, you, will you be in your new place when we have our January sip? I will. I will. So you can give us like a remote tour. So yeah, so come to the January meeting. It could give you a tour of my house. <laughs> 
<laughs> Yay! It'll be fun. Yeah. So, so yeah. Good evening, everybody. Bye. Bye. Hey. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving.